This is the Detroit Sports Podcast Network. Today's episode of the Motor City Sports Rant is brought to you by The Athletic, premium coverage for passionate Detroit sports fans. Listeners of this podcast can save 30% off the first year of an annual subscription by visiting theathletic.com slash DSP. Don't miss out on great in-depth features. The Athletic has great writers covering all the major Detroit sports. So don't miss out. Subscribe and save 30% off the first year of an annual subscription. Visit theathletic.com slash DSP. Detroit is the greatest! Straight up light you on fire for a Coney dog right now. Welcome, everybody, to the latest edition of the Motor City Sports Rant. What's going on? Big week ahead on the podcast. we got a lot to talk about. Obviously, sometimes me and Jason do not get a chance to actually meet up in studio. Jason will join us very shortly via the telephone. It was cool in that we weren't exactly sure what to talk about. We were maybe going to break down the Tigers and their weekend series versus the Indians. And things obviously changed with the news that broke Early Monday, Woj Bomb happened, and finally, after so many days, the Detroit Pistons have their man, they have decided, they have hired, they have made the push for former Toronto Raptors head coach Dwayne Casey, and he's the man. He's going to be the man in charge. He's going to be tasked with trying to get the Detroit Pistons back into the postseason consecutively with a roster that can't really be overhauled. I threw out a tweet on our Twitter page, at Detroit Podcast. And I had said, look, Mr. Casey, if you can beg management to go out there and overhaul this roster however they can, if they can spend money, convince Tom Gores to go over the luxury tax, do whatever you got to do to overhaul the roster, things will be much better. But I don't think it's going to happen. Most people, all the pundits, writers are saying that the roster is set. This is what Casey inherits. And so we'll get a chance to talk about it with Jason and hopefully with a writer from The Athletic, James Edwards, to talk about the Detroit Pistons and the hire. So I'll dial up Jason, get him on here real quick. What up, buddy? Where are you at? Uh, I'm currently driving home from work on my way to to watch my kid. Man, I was uh, excited for you to come into the office to share the big weekend, but it just takes a text message to share what I did over the weekend, how fun I had at the Detroit Tigers game. Although the Tigers got blasted, um, some news broke earlier on Monday. The Pistons finally have their head coach, and so I'm thankful to get a chance to spend a few minutes talking about the Pistons hire of Dwayne Casey as the man. How'd you hear about the news? I was literally just you know sitting at my computer doing my work and came across my uh, my computer screen. Dwayne Casey getting hired, getting a five-year deal from the Detroit Pistons. Honestly, my first thought was exactly the text that I sent you when I when I saw when I saw that, and that was how many years are the Pistons going to eat of Dwayne Casey's contract? Because five years is a long time. So you're thinking that uh, Dwayne Casey maybe was not worthy of five years. Maybe you would have been happy with three or four. I would have been a little bit more comfortable with three or four just because, I mean, we both know that this is its not a great situation. And unless they really luck out, they're not going to be really good for the next couple of years. And it's nothing against Dwayne Casey. It's more just a, it's, it's kind of how things go in the NBA is that you can't really retool an entire roster. But when there's troubles in a franchise, the first person to go is usually the coach. So that's just that's my only concern. So I'm a little bit concerned because 
Let's look at the track record of Dwayne Casey. When you saw what he did in Toronto, yes, he had much more talented individuals on that roster, but he was able to take that roster to the postseason consecutively. I think it was five straight years the Toronto Raptors were uh, in the postseason. And I know it's unfortunate that they had to kind of go up against LeBron James and exiting the way that they did with the seating that they had was really disappointing. Many people felt like... Dwayne Casey and that roster should have taken a step. But right now where the Detroit Pistons are at, if you said to me, if in the next five years, Dwayne Casey can take us to the postseason three or four years, I'll be happy with that. My expectation is not that low. I do think the realistic expectation for Dwayne Casey is, look, take this roster of whoever you got, if it's Blake Griffin, Andre, and Reggie, at least get a little bit more out of them where you can get to the postseason consecutively, maybe make some noise. I mean, the Eastern Conference is not devastatingly strong. I know LeBron's probably going to stay, maybe go to Boston, Philly, or maybe stay at Cleveland. But if you can get into that top five seed consistently, make some noise, the Pistons can at least, I think in in my eyes, I think I can convince you to have a little bit higher expectations for the Pistons. I mean, it, it almost really depends on how you want to look at the team. Is I could be optimistic and I could, and you'd probably consider me a homer to say, you know, all it takes is the right coach to get the most out of Andre Drummond, Reggie Jackson and Blake Griffin. But I'm just, I'm trying to be a little bit more realistic because outside of those three guys, you know, we were, we're not very good. We don't have a whole lot of depth. And I was actually last week when the NBA finals were going on, and they were talk, we were talk, I was talking with some, some people at work about a possible destinations for LeBron James. And I threw out there just more as a joke to begin with that the, the Pistons would actually be an interesting place to go because, you know, you have Andre Thurman, Reggie Jackson, and Blake Griffin. But then I started thinking about if LeBron James came to the Pistons that started the year off, and you're talking now about a team with Reggie Jackson, Andre Drummond, Tobias Harris, and Avery Bradley, then throw in even Marcus Morris in this roster. And that would have been a very interesting roster with LeBron James. And this is, you know, kind of off track. But back to the point of we just don't have the talent on our team to really compete. And I want to I wanna have faith in Dwayne Casey, but I'm just not sure what he's going to be able to get out of this team. See, don't you think, though, that the fair expectation is if Blake Griffin, Andre Drummond, and Reggie Jackson, if two of the three can stay healthy for a long period of time during the season, you would think that they can get at least above 39 wins like they did in 2017. I feel like the injury to Blake Griffin, the injury to Reggie Jackson kind of derailed things. And to look at things from a positive perspective, if the big three can stay healthy, you can do some things with a new head coach, a new invigorated lineup and things like that. And when you say... The part that is a little bit misleading, I think, to people is when you say, when you look at this roster, there is talent on it. You have to draw as much as you can from it. I would think that a second year Luke Kennard is going to be better. You got Bullock who can shoot threes. You know that uh, Dwayne Casey is going to preach defense as well. And so I feel like the roster, as it's made up, no, it's not championship medal. It's not probably even worthy of being considered a team that can get to the Eastern Conference Finals. But the, the, the minimum you can expect from Dwayne Casey year one is get to the postseason, even if it's a 7-8 seed. I think you could expect that realistically, and I expect that from Dwayne Casey. Just look at what he did in Toronto. I feel like that team was well-organized, well-coached. You had players that were succeeding. You developed two superstars from the draft, and I feel like Dwayne Casey was the right fit for the job, and I feel like you're swaying a little bit negative. I'm not saying you got to be a homer, but I do believe that this roster can at least compete when healthy with this head coach. I don't see Dwayne Casey walking up to the podium every single post game and blasting his player and saying repeatedly, they're not getting my message, they're not getting my message. I feel like you can draw a little bit more from this lineup, not the ultimate prize, but I think you can draw at least to try and expect to get to the playoffs, don't you think? Yes, that's definitely possible, that they can make the playoffs. So I guess my bigger issue is what I want for this team in the future. And you're right, it's it's not out of the realm of possibility to say that in the next three to four years, they can make the playoffs a couple times and maybe maybe even win a series. But 
I don't if if they're going to be doing that, it's going to be you're then focusing on Reggie Jackson, Andre Drummond, and Blake Griffin. I just don't see that working out in the long run. What I would would have rather seen this franchise, the direction that, that they should have been going into, is going into you know re- truly rebuilding this team because this still is it's going to have the stench. It's going to look like a like a Stan Van Gundy team, and I know Dwayne Casey will get as much as he can out of these guys. I would just much rather see them. Try and move Drummond. Try and move Jackson. I know you're going to have a tough time moving any of these guys, but I would, I would rather them take those steps now and suffer for at least two years. Then at that point, you can really see the, the rebuilding process starting and you're getting younger. You see what the 76ers have gone through. They've gone through years of just ineptitude. But now it's finally paid off, and they're going to be a they're going to be a powerhouse in the East for the next couple of years. And with hiring Dwayne Casey and focusing and really just trying to, you know, be a playoff team year in year out, it's it doesn't excite me. You're not excited, huh? This hire does not excite you because of the fact that you're still very worried and concerned regarding the fact that Detroit Pistons do not have a first-round pick. Their roster, in terms of uh, salary cap space, is not there. And uh, it looks like to, to me that you're just kind of going with, look, the 2017 Pistons left a horrible stench on everybody in terms of how that roster shook out. And it did. It was very damaging to have a year where you go out and you quote unquote make a blockbuster trade and everybody's supposed to be really excited. And the name that you brought in and you're paying over $30 million a year for is Blake Griffin. And then he gets hurt after 25 games and doesn't help in the stretch to make the postseason. It just kind of confirmed what everybody's worst fear was is that, hey, we don't really have a superstar, and Tom Gorris really believes that uh, Blake Griffin is a true NBA superstar when he's not. But if we look at it and we say, look, if Blake Griffin can stay healthy, if a system can be put in place that can highlight everybody's strengths, there is a framework, and I think I can convince you when you see it. You're going to need to, and I know you're more of a wait and see, You want to be able to see it on the court. I'm telling you, I think when we look at the Pistons, when they start in October, you're going to see a a new invigorated team. I think they're going to have a good start to the season. I think that Dwayne Casey is going to be able to take some talented individuals. Maybe he just might even give more minutes to the likes of a Henry Allenson, more minutes to the likes of a Luke Kennard, and maybe highlight them and maybe get some potential out of them that we are not even expecting. And I think that's what you can try and at least expect early on with Dwayne Casey and I know the roster and the limitations are there and you definitely are uh, not it's not unfounded but I do think that with this hire by giving this man five years by allowing him to pick his assistants many people are thinking that Ed Stefanski is going to be the guy that's going to be mostly in charge of running everything I think the working relationship between Dwayne Casey Stefanski and the assistants can be well enough to meet your goals, especially if LeBron maybe decides to go out west. That's a big key. And I know that uh, we joke around and we talk about, well, where is LeBron going to end up? But I know it's not going to be in Detroit. But even if he ends up with Philly, that may take time to, you know, get some chemistry and work things out. You know the class of the East, uh, you know, is going to basically roll through Boston and Philly. And then the Pistons can be right there. They can be three, four, five. They can be in the mix if they just maybe even add a second rounder, that is a surprise if Dwayne Casey has solid input in terms of talent and his evaluation of what's been going on in the draft. I mean, look, Draymond Green went in the second round. If you get that diamond in the rough, I know they don't have a first round pick, but if you get a second round pick and he makes contributions and he maybe adds defensive effort, maybe he's a talented individual and he makes the roster, then it's a, it's a, it's a brand new team. I think you're going to, you're, you're based on a lot of this. On luck, and I believe in luck. I just, I, you're, tr- it's, it's, it's me. I'm waiting to see. I have a hard time. They're gonna have to get really creative to really make some moves in the East. Jason, you're exactly right. They're gonna need to be definitely creative to find ways to utilize that roster. I mean, man, uh, everybody looked at it and said that at least in 2017, the Pistons should have at least made the postseason because of how weak the Eastern Conference was, and they could have even made some noise. But 
I do want to talk to you about this. Many people are even now, when I asked on Twitter, at Detroit Podcast, I said, hey, what do you think about the hiring of Dwayne Casey, and what do you think about the roster? Many people are jumping to the notion that, hey, look, even with Dwayne Casey, even with these players, many people are hoping that Tom Gora sells the team before the five years are up. People are starting to pinpoint and starting to examine the role of Tom Gorris with this organization. Is he involved? What's his level of involvement? Does he know how to put together an organization when you hire a coach first ahead of a GM? And so many people are minimizing Dwayne Casey and just going right to, you know what? The Pistons are not going to have any sort of success unless Tom Gorris changes things dramatically. Is that how you're seeing it? And uh, many people are pinpointing and uh, are very critical of Tom Gorris right now. Tom Gorris is not one... I'm not sure if anybody's really a fan of him here in Detroit right now. He he seems like a, a worse poor man's version of Mark Cuban. At least that's the way he looks to me. Because, you know, he's a, this tycoon and he comes in buys a an NBA franchise, but he's had zero success. He I think he's he's come in and run it. He's he's run it poorly, obviously, for now or since he's since he's got the team. I, it is bad to say, but I'd, I'd much rather him try to sell it get somebody else in because they need better management for this team. Why is it that you think the Detroit Pistons would be benefited from Tom Gore selling the team? Why is it that we're getting these messages? What is the couple things or what has Tom Gorris put out there in the last couple seasons that have led you, many of our supporters who message us, why is Tom Gore's stock right now very low in terms of his, uh, in terms of how people view him and what he's done as an owner of the Detroit Pistons? Because when he came in, he had this win now mentality. If it would have actually panned out and Sam Van Gutty would have, you know, successfully employed whatever strategy he was coming up with, then it would have completely changed everything. But because he came in, had this win now mentality, and instead of changing course when it when it clearly wasn't working, he double he essentially doubled down, you know, with the Blake Griffin deal on win now mentality. That instead of trying to build around, you know, some decent players that you picked up in free agency, like a Tobias Harris, like a Marcus Morris, and you know those guys aren't great, but it's a the foundation to build upon. And you you trade away a bunch of guys to get you know, one superstar and who, you know, it is, it's only been what half a season that he's been um, on the team. And, you know, he may come out next year and play, you know, 82 games and be amazing. But until he does that, I have a hard time believing him. Yeah. I think that's where many people looked at his antics. And I think people on the surface are kind of evaluating Tom Gorris from what they've seen when he's come to town. I mean, he's only been to, I think they said that last year he was only maybe in town for four to five total games. What they saw from him was a guy throwing T-shirts. What they saw was a guy that maybe from what we saw was not all there in terms of uh, some sort of inebriation or some sort of being altered. We saw someone that did not look as professional as we would expect a professional owner to look like. And it looked like he was a guy that was just kind of, you know, using the Little Caesars Arena as a club and just showing up and doing his thing. And so many people, when they saw that, they were like, what kind of owner acts like this? You know, not buttoning up his shirt, not acting in a way or presenting himself in a way that indicated that he was serious about being the owner of the Pistons. And then when the move is made to fire Stan Van Gundy, it, it didn't seem like, the way this was put together by hiring consultants, by having uh, hires made really late after the season. It just felt like when people evaluated it, they said, this isn't done the way that other organizations do it. And it speaks to Tom Gorris and what he you know, needs to continue to learn on the job, which is, hey, you know, being an owner doesn't mean you show up half the time. you got to be invested. You can't just put people in charge because your first go-around when you put Stan Van Gundy in charge and you kind of laid low, then it didn't work out. We're not saying you got to be like Mark Cuban and be involved in every single aspect of many decisions, but we're saying that it can't be the way it was. He's got to be a little bit more hands-on, be aware, and be an owner that actually tries to empower the Pistons to move the Pistons forward. It seems like with Tom Gorris, the Pistons, in terms of their credibility and respect, have gone backwards. Absolutely. And 
I'm not sure if he can ever really gain that back. Obviously, if they if they do start winning, it's a people forget what happens. But if we are going to be going through hard times for the next couple of years, or even if we are just you know making the playoffs but not really making uh, much headway, it's going to be tough for him to really you know endear the people to him. Yeah, Jason, I'm glad to get a chance to talk to you. We'll keep it a little bit shorter this week. I know you're busy and you're handling things, but I'm glad I at least got a chance to, you know, get you on the blower and have a conversation about it. Um, There's more information that's going to come out regarding Dwayne Casey, the draft, maybe if there's going to be a general manager hired or if it's going to be Ed Stefanski really getting the title. So it's good to get your opinion on it. I see that, you know, to wrap it up, you are a little bit negative on it. You're a little bit soured on it. But you do, obviously, you know, you're going to watch, and I do think that having a new head coach, uh, Dwayne Casey, in place does give us more to talk about this summer regarding the Pistons and how this is going to be put together. So I appreciate your time. What are you going to do the rest of the day? I'm going to be hanging out with my kiddo and uh, yeah, probably just uh, watch uh, Moana and sing and Cars 3 and just tons and tons of fun. Yes, sir. I appreciate your time, Jason. Thank you so much. Jason's kind of grading it like a C, I can tell, that he's kind of uh, still waiting and seeing regarding what's going to happen. I'll, I'll, give, give me, I'll give it a B- minus because I do think that he'll come in and he'll, he'll give it a boost. As I feel like when any coach comes in, he, he'll give his team a boost. I'm, I'm going to give it a B- minus with, possib- with, uh, with a chance to get a, up to a B+. Plus. Because if he can come in and actually make some moves in come playoff season, then, you know, anything can happen at that point. Yes, sir. Follow Jason at Jarvi the King. If anything that he said rubbed you the wrong way, definitely message us at Detroit Podcast or message Jason on Twitter. Jason, we'll talk next week, brother. Uh, later, man. Interesting. Jason's take. Love having Jason on the podcast. Uh, he's not really on board. I'm a little bit more excited about Dwayne Casey coming on board than Jason is, but that's the way it goes. Jason sees things a little bit differently. He's not as uh, positive as I am. But stay with us. After the break, we're going to come back. We'll finish the podcast with a great interview. Uh, James Edwards the third. Uh, from The Athletic, Detroit Pistons beat writer will join us, and he'll give us his take. I know he's got a lot of great information, great insight, and we always love having James on the podcast. So stay with us, James Edwards from The Athletic, coming up next. I want to tell you about our host site, Podomatic.com. When Adam and I first started this project, we were looking for a great place to host all of our recorded audio, and thank goodness we found Podomatic. Why do we use them? We record podcasts every single day. And recently, we crossed the 1,000 podcast barrier. We have now recorded 1,000 podcasts on this platform. And we've only used one host site, Podomatic.com. If you're looking to reach the level of success as the Detroit Sports Podcast Network, have great guests, have great conversation. When big news breaks, you can easily get guests. you got to have a great host site. Doc and Jock, Vito, Jason, Jerry, Gus, Steve, all the hosts here on the network, we're going to recommend one host site and one host site alone, Podomatic.com. All right, on the phone line with us, the Detroit Pistons beat writer for The Athletic. You can subscribe and save 30% off the subscription by visiting theathletic.com slash DSP. We have James Edwards III joining us on a big news day. The Pistons finally have their man. They've named their next head coach. James, what's going on? Hey, how you doing, man? Good. Appreciate you having me on. Always good to chat with you. So the news broke earlier on Monday. The Detroit Pistons have committed. It sounds like there were talks going on all weekend long, and they finally nailed home a deal five years for the former coach of the Toronto Raptors, a man that had success getting that Raptors team into the postseason consistently. But when we look at the hiring of Dwayne Casey, it comes with a lot of pros as well as a lot of criticisms that people have that have messaged us. What's been your reaction since you heard the news regarding Dwayne Casey coming on board for the Detroit Pistons? 
Uh, just seeing my Twitter feed, I think people are just happy that the, the search is done and they know who the head coach is. This has been over a month-long process since they parted ways with Stan, and everybody's kind of just been wondering what's been going on, how are they going to figure this out, who are they going to bring in. So I think relief was kind of the number one thing. And I think people are fine with Dwayne Casey. I think it's uh, – I don't want to say a safe tr- – a safe um, a safe – choice but it's a choice where it seems like the bar is low in Detroit and the, the ownership group just wants them to make the playoffs and whatever happens from there happens and Dwayne Casey if he's shown anything it's that he can get into the playoffs um, so obviously I mean the, the Raptors roster is a little bit more conventional in terms of the way the NBA is going today uh, than the Pistons is, is but the Pistons if healthy which is a big if have a, have a roster to stay have a roster that could make the playoffs. So what does Dwayne Casey bring to the table what can fans expect you know, the first couple years under Dwayne Casey, new head coach? I mean, I think the big thing that he brings is a, a new voice. The team has been having the same voice that is Stan Van Gundy for the past four years. And I think at a point when you don't have too much success and you keep hearing the same voice and the same things preach, it, it probably starts to, you probably start to turn the, uh, the the other cheek to it and, and, and maybe zone it out. And I think the team needed a new voice. I think Casey... Not only does he bring that, he brings recent success. Obviously, Coach of the Year as voted by his peers this year. I think he's a guy that offensively is willing to listen to other people around him and try to innovate, be innovative and, and, and work with what he's got and try to create whatever it is possible that he thinks can bring in the best uh, results. And, and, and Dwayne Casey has proven with Nick Nurse as an assistant, especially this past year, that they, they, they're willing to adjust their offense to, to get the most out of guys. And I think that's a big thing for this fan base is offensively this team has struggled for much of the last – since the turn of the decade. And I think Dwayne Casey, if he brings in the right people, he can maybe try to make something of it. Yeah, many people are discussing the roster, the fact that they don't have cap flexibility. Basically, he's going to inherit this team. Maybe he can make a couple tweaks here and there. But what would Dwayne Casey need to do right out of the gate – to maybe reinvigorate this fan base, what will it take for Dwayne Casey to at least maybe you know allow more fans to feel like they're passionate about the Pistons? Like you said, it just kind of feels like many people aren't talking about the Pistons. They feel like, well, you know what? They're they're kind of caught in the middle sometimes. They're not really a championship team. They're not really tanking, and so he's got a big task to try and come in here and invigorate this fan base. Is there anything he can do early on that can bring about uh, more support for the Pistons? I think the big thing is get out to a good record and keep it. Make this from the start of the year to the end of the year. Give this fan base something to root for, something to, to that they can show that hey, like last. Well, for example, last year the team started fourteen and seven and then dovetailed and and spiraled out of control. I mean, at the beginning of the year the Pistons were hot talk. They go into Golden State, beat Golden State. Go into Boston, beat Boston, and they were the talk of the town for about two months there. And as soon as they started losing, everybody forgot about the Pistons. So now the big thing for Casey is getting off to a hot start because you're obviously going to have that kind of that aura around you being the new coach trying to one up the not personally but trying to do a better job than the coach that was there before and if you can get out to a good start and maintain that and this team is somewhere in between the 4 and the 6 seed for most of the year in terms of the playoff race I think that that'll get the fans excited yeah, one of the primary critiques of Dwayne Casey was he was able to get that Raptors team to the postseason, but then when he came across LeBron and then taking that next step, just wasn't able to do it. I'm like, you know what? If he can get the Pistons into the postseason four out of five years, I feel like that's a, a major success. And so those people that are being a little bit critical, I feel like if they just kind of gave it a little bit of chance, this was the man who won the NBA Coach of the Year, had 50 win seasons, and was able to kind of put Toronto on the map there. Yeah, no, definitely. And I mean, the Pistons' roster is not as eye not not as eye catching as it was in Toronto. This is a guard driven league, and Toronto had two of the one of the best backcourts in the NBA. The Pistons have, in a guard driven league, have a have a very very good front court, and and Andre Drummond and Blake Griffin. So there is going to be some differences there, and I'm interested to see how he adapts and and, and coaches up those two. Um, but he, I mean, the thing with Dwayne is the thing that got him fired, and it's not the only thing, but to get swept by Cleveland twice in the postseason, when I mean Cleveland or Indiana takes them to seven, Boston takes them to to, to a, a great series, and Toronto, who's supposed to be the most ready team to to knock them down, they they go zero and eight the past two years and lose three years in a row to Cleveland. So there's obviously something there. He can't figure out LeBron. Not many people can, but he he's got to he's got to look into if he's able to put himself in that position again no matter where lebron if lebron stays in the east and that comes across again you would think wherever lebron goes that's the number one favorite for the for the eastern conference title but 
if you're Casey, you got to really look in the mirror and it's like, why couldn't I get past LeBron? Why couldn't I even make it interesting? And, and that's the thing. I mean, if fans are fine with making the first round of the playoffs for the five years and, and all that, that, that's totally fine. But I mean, I, I know a lot of fans too, that are, that are ready to, to be contenders again. And I'm just not sure if this roster in place is able to do that. Now, you wrote in your latest article for The Athletic, you wrote, if health works in the franchise's favor next season, the Pistons should be in the playoff mix. Is that a realistic expectation? Because many people don't even agree with that notion. Oh, yeah, if they're healthy, they should be. You look at the teams in there, you you wonder if LeBron goes west, the Pistons are undoubtedly better than Cleveland. Um, do you Do you trust that Indiana can have that type of year that it had again last year? Um, what's going to happen in Washington? Are, are the are, is the Beal Wall combo? Is it going to work? Is Washington ready to blow that up? Um, I, I just don't think there's that many surefire teams in the East, and you also know injuries can happen. I think the Pistons are definitely if healthy, which is a big if, and obviously as it should be. But if they're healthy, they should definitely be right there in the in the discussion. What were your takeaways of the process to hire Dwayne Casey? A lot of people discussed that, you know what, it took several months after you fired Stan Van Gundy, I mean, over 50 days to name your head coach. You have a um, consultant group that kind of worked with Ed Stefanski. People were like, this path that the Pistons took once they relieved Stan Van Gundy of his duties was non-traditional. Many people haven't, you know, been in favor of this process in terms of how long it took. And now you've, you finally, you hired Dwayne Casey. What did you make of the process that the Pistons took to get to this point, I'm fine with it. I mean, uh, I think you would want your your whatever franchise you root for to do its due diligence and make sure that they feel they got the right guy. And that's what it seems like they did. They did, interviewed a lot of people at a very diverse candidate pool and from different backgrounds, different races, shapes, sizes, and they did their due diligence. And obviously, Casey was the most qualified and the one that they felt could help this team get to whatever their goals are next year. Um, so I have no issue with how it took and. I mean, Ed Stefanski's running the show, it seems like, there in terms of the front office personnel. So all those people that are keep saying, why are the Pistons hiring a coach without a president and GM? Ed Stefanski, get familiar with the name. He's a guy that was brought in as a senior advisor, and maybe that's some of the Pistons' fault for not kind of clarifying what his role is, but it seems like he's going to have a bigger role than just trying to help this team find a head coach. It seems like he's going to be around for a while. I think he signed a three-year deal. So, I mean, I'm totally fine with it. It's it's not like they have a number one pick or, I mean, the schedule hasn't even come out yet. So what, why are people so panties in a bunches about them not getting a coach? It's not like there are going to be games to be played anytime soon. Ed Stefanski, probably Dwayne Casey, probably going to have a press conference. When you get a chance to cover the Pistons, I know you get a chance to interview these individuals. What one or two questions you're looking forward to maybe asking uh, the likes of an Ed Stefanski or Dwayne Casey when you get that chance? I think the big thing for me is why did Dwayne want this job? I mean, he was still owed $6.5 million by the Raptors this year, even though he wasn't going to coach. And, I mean, there, there's talk that this could be his last job. He's been fired from a couple other places. And to put his – all of, I mean, he's financially, he's set. I, I think Vince Ellis of the Free Press Report, he has a five-year deal worth about $7 million a year. And I mean, financially, he's set. But if he wants to try to win a title and try to get over that hump, you would think that he maybe sit out a year and – and, and test the market next year. But you never know. Openings don't always come open, and maybe this is one that he felt he could, like I said, low-risk, high-reward. If he can get into the playoffs and appease his boss, and maybe they make something happen where they get to round two or round three, and he looks like a savior. So it seemed like to him it was a low-risk, high-reward. And then I obviously asked Ed Stefanski what what was kind of the everything that went into to hiring a coach and, and, and the decisions that, that, that were recently let loose. Very well understood. We have James Edwards with us from The Athletic. I want to talk to you a little bit about the past NBA Finals that we just witnessed. We witnessed the Golden State Warriors led by Kevin Durant, Curry. You feel like, wow, what an organization that the Warriors are and things like that. But, you know, the other side of it is some people are critiquing the Finals saying, look, it was not as interesting as the NHL Finals. And it made it makes it for a sport right now, the NBA, where it's a little bit too predictable. What did you make of the finals, the Warriors winning it, and the state of the current NBA? I mean, I, I thought from day one that the Warriors would win, and I have no issue with that. I like to see good basketball, and I think the Warriors play the best basketball there is in the world. And I know people like to knock them because they signed Kevin Durant and all that, but, like, they, they have four stars, three of them they drafted. So we're going to sit here and knock them because they drafted well? I think that's not fair. And then you, they won without Kevin Durant before, and obviously it was a little more interesting in that sense, but they needed help. So why – my thing is, you ask anybody on this planet, would they want to play with the Golden State Warriors? They're all their answers would be yes. Who wouldn't want to win? 
who wouldn't want to play basketball where the ball is moving? Who wouldn't want to watch, have a front row seat to watch Steph rain 50 footers and KD shoot over everybody in his sight? It's just, I understand that people don't think it's competitive, but I mean, were people saying this when Jordan was playing too and he was running the NBA and they went six straight and it, it's just, it just is what it is. That's kind of the way it is. There's always kind of a run in the NBA and somebody's going to knock off the Warriors eventually. And I think it'll make it that much more sweeter once that day comes. James, thank you so much for the time. Continued success. Great work at The Athletic. You can read his work at theathletic.com. James, thank you so much for the time. Appreciate you. Thank you. There it was, James Edwards from The Athletic. Again, you can subscribe and now save 30% off the first year of a subscription by visiting theathletic.com slash DSP. I think in the days ahead, we'll get a chance to know Dwayne Casey a little bit more. I'm fascinated by that first introductory press conference. I think there's going to be a lot of talk about the state of the Pistons, ownership, the NBA, and uh, Dwayne Casey and the Pistons brass are going to have to do a good job of reinvigorating the fan base because right now, you know, many people are looking at that roster, the limited ability to kind of overturn it, and all people are doing is just judging what the Pistons did in 2017, 2018, And so next season, everything has to be a lot better, and hopefully the Pistons can do some winning. That's the big thing. That's the name of the game. Go out there on the court, play a solid brand of basketball, offensively, defensively, and the number one goal for the Detroit Pistons will be stay healthy. That was the Motor City Sports Rant. We greatly appreciate you guys speaking into it. Thank you so much. You can follow us on the network at Detroit Podcast. Check out our website, DetroitSportsPodcast.com. For Jason Jarvie, James Edwards III, thanks, everybody, for downloading. We appreciate your time. Bye-bye. idiot. Uh, f*** you. Bye-bye. Good day, sir! I said good day! All right. Take care now. Bye-bye then. Loser. <laughs>